What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're here on New Year's Day. And there's a reason for that. I wanted the first gun I shot this year to be the gun I've waited for for three years. Now there's been a lot of anticipated guns on the channel, a lot by me, a lot by the viewers, but we agree on one. And since the Alien, I don't think I've ever had this many questions for a firearm. So we got it for you. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Dan Wesson DWX. Yes, it's real, and yes, you can get one. I actually got one of these myself uh, for around 2K. They are pricey, but hopefully they are worth it. So a lot of questions about this gun. There hasn't been a lot of videos about it. There hasn't been a lot of information about it released from CZ, uh, other than the fact that it is sort of a 2011 uh, CZ 75 baby, I guess. If they both you know, got together and they both fell in love and they held hands and one night things went awry, this thing came out. And I gotta tell you, it is kind of a collaboration from a lot of things just going right. Uh, Dan Wesson, if you're unfamiliar, is a company that's owned by CZ, and they've been known for a long time for making high, very high quality 1911s, and now they make double stack 1911s. And uh, since they're owned by CZ, apparently they got together and they decided to make a CZ 2011. And that's what everybody's excited about, the Dan Wesson DWX. And this gun is a five inch, single action only, all metal frame gun, and it takes CZ75 grips. It's got the CZ75 grip angle. It's got the exact same grip as the Shadow 2, in my personal opinion. Uh, even the CZ75 grips will fit on it, according to lock grips. However, they did tell me that I think you have to do something with the screws. Maybe you have to use the DWX screws, or maybe you have to get a uh, different screw. They're gonna actually be sending me uh, some screws to throw my uh, new custom grips on there. It has a ambi safety. Uh, magazine release is swappable. It looks like a CZ75 magazine release. We have a full Picatinny rail on the bottom of the dust cover. It makes it look very, very cool in my opinion. I hate the CZ75 just one single slotted rail. I think it looks much better with a whole big Picatinny any rail. We have more of a 2011 style slide. It looks less like a CZ75 slide and more like a 2011 slide. Uh, just in the thickness and kind of the girth, it doesn't have like, it's not quite as small as a CZ75 side, which is nice actually because I can get a hold of it really, really easy. We've got uh, anti-glare uh, serrations up on the top there. We have a front fiber optic with an adjustable rear that looks exactly like the Shadow 2 setup, except you're gonna have a little bit more sight radius with the full five inch, as opposed to like the four six of the CZ. The hammer looks like a CZ as well, and the magazine release, or the slide release kind of looks like something out of a, kind of a mix, I suppose. And then obviously at the bottom there, we have a 2011 trigger. Now people would ask, why would you want a 2011 trigger in a CZ since CZ has pretty close to a 2011 trigger already? Well, I would answer with the adjustable length of the trigger bow, which is why I like it. Because like the one thing I don't like about the CZ is that in single action, the trigger's all the way to the rear. Whereas with a 2011 style gun, you can actually adjust the length of bow so you can increase or decrease the length of your trigger reach from the web of your hand to the tip of your finger. So you can adjust the trigger to the exact length you'd want it to break where you want it. And I think that's very cool. And on top of that, we've got some serrations on the trigger and it looks really nice as well, along with these red uh, aluminum grips, which are very, very aggressive. I didn't think they would be because they kind of didn't look like they were in the videos I watched, but in actual action, they are very grippy. So I'm gonna be pretty happy to, to shoot this. This is obviously made in America as well, uh, over in uh, New York, I believe, at the Dan Wesson factory. So that's kind of cool also. We have a uh, we have a recessed crown bull barrel on there, which is something you get right out of a Wilson Combat or something. Very cool also. So it's got a lot of high-end features on the gun. And again, like I said, it's got a high-end price to match at around 2,000 uh, bucks. One thing I got a lot of questions about is the magazine compatibility. To me, right off the bat, I haven't shot the gun yet, but this looks like a PDPF mag to me. As you can see the cuts here at the bottom, and then the follower, it looks like they put a aluminum base plate on a CZ uh, P10F mag. Uh, people told me that it takes CZ uh, shadow mags, it does not. As you can see here, that won't even go in. The newer version, the older version, it'll go in, but it won't lock. Uh, this mag is the mag that came with the gun, it only came with two, but they came with 19 round mags, which is coincidentally the same capacity as the PDPF, or the, P, or the uh, P10F. And as you can see here, if I put the magazine in, and put the slide back, it does lock. So we're gonna test some, uh, we're gonna test how well that works today, because I do have a bunch of these. 
before we do that though, I do want to thank my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. Uh, we bought the gun with the Patreon dollars, so we appreciate that. Uh, if you want to support the channel, that's absolutely the best way to do it. There's a link in the description below. All you got to do is go to the, down to the link in the description and sign up. I also want to mention super thanks if you guys are into Patreon. Super thanks also pays for ammo and guns for us, so we appreciate it. And I also want to mention a local shelter named Iowa. It's the YSS. It's the new year. It's the holidays. Please go down to that link and donate to those kids. It's a good thing to do. It'll make you feel good, and it'll help them out. Now let's take this gun down there and shoot it because God damn it, I can't wait anymore. Now a lot of people are gonna watch this video and they're gonna go to my 2011 videos, they're gonna go to my CZ videos and they're gonna see how I shot this gun versus that and they're gonna make their choice. I have to warn you that it is New Year's Day and I'm Irish so I got a little bit of the bottle flu, thanks John by the way, uh, and I might not shoot quite as well because I'm wearing thick gloves, it's really cold outside today and it'll be a little bit more difficult to shoot the old pistol but I'll do the best I can. So we're gonna start out here at 75 and just see how we do. Worst things have happened. First shot of 2023, 75 yards, and we get a hit. The green fiber optic really shows up too. Now the one downside to a 2011 style trigger, and the fact that the trigger, since the trigger is a 2011 style trigger straight to the rear, and it's not a double single action trigger like a CZ, the, the trigger guard is not as wide, okay? And the trigger, although it gives me better trigger reach, it gives me less room in the trigger guard for my thick gloves and my big ass hands. I'm also 6'4". So uh, I'm actually having a little bit of problem resetting the trigger without hitting the front of the trigger guard. Recoil and pulse is fucking phenomenal. I'm really happy with that. I'm happy with this CZ set. It feels like I gotta break my, my wrist over just a little bit more for some reason than I do a CZ. And really what I'm fighting right now is this. As you can see in here, it's really difficult to shoot rapid fire. So what I'm gonna have to do is just deal with it and I'm just gonna have to put on some smaller gloves. All right, so now we're gonna get two birds stoned at once and we're gonna try the PDPF, or so why do I keep saying the PDPF? P10F mag. P10F. P10F, Everybody. Mag. And we're gonna shoot at 100 yards here and just see how we do. I'm having a lot of problems focusing on the front sight while my breath gets in the way yep. of the white target yep. on the white snow. So I gotta admit, it's kind of a, I was having a lot of visual issues there. But the gun not only worked with the PDPF, or fucking P10F mags, it also locked back. And we are using Blazer Brass. Thanks Manning and Son, we appreciate that. All right, I just have, I'm having a lot of visual problems. Let's move a little closer. Okay, but you did it though. You still got a lot. Okay, sexy. Now I would say that 100 yard uh, situation there kind of highlights the biggest problem with this gun and that it's not optics ready. So if you're trying to really focus on a target and you're trying to see it and you're trying to like see the outline of it, like if you're looking at a, a white Ipsic target at 100 yards, yet your eyes want to focus on the target to try to see it. The problem is that it takes the focus off the front sight. So I kept kind of like looking at the target and then going out of focus, trying to focus on the front sight, make the shot without moving the gun. Whereas if you had a red dot, you can threat focus, you can target focus the whole time and, hor and uh, 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 hover the dot over the target and it just makes long range accuracy on targets that's harder to see a lot easier. And you can't do that with this gun. And that is the thing I don't like about it the most, is that, to be honest with you, the CZ Shadow has a good optic system. If you were to put an optic system on the slide, like the Shadow 2, I think that would bump the value of this gun up a lot, and at $2,000, I think it should have an optics cut personally. Also considering, I think there's gonna be a new limited optics division in USPSA, where you could run an optics gun like this, I think that'd be very sweet. So CZ, I'd really appreciate if in the future, 
optics cut. That being said, there's a couple companies out there that are already offering it and we might get one. Now we're about 55 yards and that's a fucking chip shot for this thing. Mm -hmm. Now I can see the target pretty easy. Better situation. Yeah. Double taps at 55, super easy. The recoil impulse is nice and smooth. The slide tracks really well. I was initially worried because the recoil springs seem tight, but the recoil impulse is great. It's not dumping forward too much, which is what I was worried about. Sometimes you get a strong, tight recoil spring, the gun likes to rock forward after you shoot, and that kind of fucks up your double taps. You want the gun to remain on target. Oh yeah. Now we're having fun. Now we're having fun. Okay. All right, so now we're at the 10 yard line with the GWX. Got a couple mags loaded up. We'll just see how she kicks. I got uh, hit real bad. Yeah, I got a little spall. Oh. No, I didn't know I only had one round left. <laughs> People ask why I retain my mags because I'm lazy and I don't want to pick them up. So far so good. Smooth. Now is it, I'm interested in trying to do a side-by-side -side comparison. We're gonna do a lot of comparisons with this gun because it's smooth, but it's a 42 ounce all steel gun that's a single action, it's a $2,000 price point. I'd be interested to see how smooth it is compared to something like a Staccato P or something like the CZ75. And the reason why I say that is, I'm a big believer in the sub five inch nine millimeter slides. And the reason why I say that is five inch was kind of the standard for the 45. But as far as the nine millimeter goes, I feel like it's almost a little too much slide weight for a uh, nine millimeter. And I think that's why the shadow goes with like the 4647. Atlas Gunworks, who in my opinion makes the best guns in the world, they run about 4.6. And then you have Staccato, who makes phenomenal guns as well. They run about 4.4 in their Staccato P. So, I don't know if you ever shot like a commander length or like a 4.5 inch, but a lot of times that reciprocating mass is moving a little faster. It allows you to just get a little faster, or at least maybe allows you to feel it a little faster. The other concern I have is I do feel, when shooting real fast, I do feel a little dip down. And I don't know if that's a slide mass or if it's the recoil spring. And I'm being a little nitpicky here because I've been wanting to get my hands on this gun for so long and I wanted to know how it felt and I've, I've been up nights trying to figure out if this is going to shoot better or worse than a CZ. So, we're just, we're just figuring it out together. Now, it shoots like a fucking demon. Maybe we'll do some failure drills for about, I don't know, 8-10 yards here. And we'll just put one in the middle, put one in the head, and we'll keep bopping them back and forth. So accurate and so smooth. I just don't know. I don't know if it's better or worse than a CZ, so we're definitely gonna have to do a comparison. All right, so I got five rounds left in the uh, P10F mag, and I just wanted to give it a shot at long range since I'm uh, getting a little more familiar with it. So we're at about 110. I'll take that. Shit. Getting cold now. Yeah, I'm freezing my ass off. It was just fucking shivering when I was shooting at 110. Wow. Whew, a little hungover too, but it is what it is. Fucking gun was amazing. We shot, I don't know, a little over 100, right? 125 or something maybe? Yeah. Yeah, a little extra because I mean, I've wanted to shoot this gun for so long and it's, it's I think it lives up to the hype. Well, again, I mentioned that I wish I had an optic system, but the good news is, is there are companies that will just cut it. Um, is that an extra step? Yes, but will CZ come out with this optics ready? Yeah, especially if it's popular, they definitely will. Most of their guns are optics ready. Um, I would see this as a direct competitor currently to the TS2, uh, just because of similar sight radius, uh, single action, as opposed to the Shadow 2, which is a double single. 
Um, but uh, with the optics cut, I think it'll be pretty sweet. I'd like to really stretch this out with an optic, so I'm eventually gonna get mine cut. I like the grip angle, I like the grips, I like the combination of the CZ75 and the 2011, because they're my two favorite guns. Now, is it better than either of those guns? I would argue no. I would argue that it's the same, I think. I, th I think that it functions the same. I think that if you got a Staccato P next to this, it would be up to the shooter. I think if you put a Tactical Sport 2 next to this, it would be up to the shooter. I don't think the gun is inferior or superior. I think that it comes with uh, 2011 features I really like. I personally like the grip of the CZ75, but I don't like the trigger reach, and this fixes that for me. So for me, being a bigger guy, I could possibly shoot this better. Now I might like the recoil pulse of the Shadow 2 a little better, because that's my personal favorite recoil and pulse of any gun. Um, I need a lot more practice to decide if I really, really like this more or less, but I would say it's definitely on par, and if it's on par with some of the best guns in the world, that's really saying something. Today, we shot 125 rounds through the gun, and we put a little Slip 2000 on it. You know, it's obviously there's snow outside, it's cold, and the gun ran great. We had no malfunctions, we had no, uh, no, like, failure to lock back or anything. Like, it was all perfect. So that's what I expect from a company like Dan Weston who's owned by CZ, because CZ, I covet CZ a little above 2011s just because they're more reliable generally overall. And I don't mean like, there's a lot of really reliable 2011s, but the Shadow 2 is are unbelievably reliable. I mean, I have four, five, 6,000 rounds through them with no failures. I expect that from this, especially at the $2,000 price point. And I think we've achieved that, at least a good bit of reliability so far. So I'm gonna definitely do 1,000 round review of this. I don't care if you guys watch it. I wanna shoot this a 1,000 times. <laughs> I, I love high performance stuff. I know that sometimes I get some expensive stuff on the channel, but I love to see where the top of the mountain is, so I have a good comparison for everything else, you know? And this gun is right in there. I'm very happy with it overall. Is it a boutique gun? Yes. Is it division like capable currently in any competition that I'm aware of? I don't actually think so. So is it like a range and fun gun? It absolutely is. Could it be a good home defense gun? Yes, it absolutely could be. Could it flex in a concealed carry? Maybe. Um, if your guy carries a full size 1911, yep, it's the same size, right? It just has 19 plus one, which is pretty good. Uh, but is it gonna be like easy to carry like a Glock 19? Absolutely not. So that's one thing to keep in mind. It is a niche gun, it is a competition gun or a Plinkin style gun. Uh, it's $2,000, it's also very expensive, but also performs at that price point. So, is it for you? Maybe, I'm not sure. Is it for me? Yeah, it's for me. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.